Good evening to you all and welcome back to another episode of the preview show brought to you by us here at the Fan Zone Podcast. Your home for laughs, tears and everything in between as we talk about the beautiful game and of course our Bolton Wanderers. The preview show is sponsored by Love of My Socials, the place to go for all of your social media marketing and branding needs. If you'd like to find out more about our sponsors, then head over to our website, www.thefanzonepod.co.uk, and you can do exactly that. Joined this evening by myself, Benson Blake, Ben McQuaid, and as always, a special guest in Tim Edwards. Strap yourselves in, because it's always a bumpy ride, and of course, we hope you enjoy the show. But without further ado, we'll get stuck into this evening's episode of the preview. Uh, we welcome Tim from the Fearless in Devotion podcast, as seen in Welcome to Wrexham, no less. Tim, thank you for joining us. How are we this evening? Very good. Thank you very much for having me. I keep forgetting that we're in the documentary. I'm genuinely <laughs> here. It's just, it's just weird. It's just weird to sort of, you know, one day I think I'll, I'll look back in five, ten years' time and go, oh my God, that happened. So yeah, it's a bit wacky. I've got to ask you, how did that come about? Did they ask you whether we can include it or? Yeah, I mean, we, we, did, we did some bits. I think it was the second series. I think we just did a little a couple of sort of voiceover clips so that they sort of got us involved then. And then they just kind of ramped it up a bit more in the third season. They just wanted to, probably similar to the whole Sunderland Till I Die thing, obviously they had the sort of, uh, it was like a Macam's podcast or something on this. So they wanted to get that buy-in from, from the fans, I suppose, and involve as many people as they could. So in addition to all the sort of characters, in inverted commas, that you see in, in, in the documentary, they wanted to get, I hate the word content creator, I don't like using it, but just, you know, people who press a button, talk stuff, and then stop the button. To, to end recording is how I kind of describe it. So, yeah, the, the, the producer just been lovely and they just went to, to keep us on board. And then we realised that we were getting quite heavily involved for, for the third season and we were doing a lot. But it was it was very much an organic process, the third season. It was like, can you do these lines? Because this episode is going to be airing in like three weeks. It was, it was that kind of like swift nature. Right. Of so it was a bit wow. weird watching it on the telly going, I only recorded that in this room like two weeks ago. <laughs> so it's a bit weird to sort of see that happen and, and, and it happens so so organically like that but they, they've been great they've been you know we you know it's, it's great to it's not taking a massive amount of our time but it's it's great that they acknowledge you know our pod and, and, and our friends and, and Rob Ryan Red it's just lovely it's lovely to have that involvement and, and ultimately it's, it's kind of immortalised forever really and we've played our very small part in it but it's just nice to nice to have, and it's definitely definitely increased the profile of, of, of the pod and everything else. Wonderful. Well, without further ado, we will get stuck into this evening's episode of The Preview. Welcome to another episode of the Fan Zone Podcast, your home for all things Bolton Wanderers, up the trotters, the Northwest's number one podcast. Thank you all very much for joining us. It has been a little while for me. Ben is an absolute trooper. He's been in the podcast scene for the Fan Zone. I think, what, what, what number are we on now? Is it four in a week? This is Yeah, four in the last eight days it is now, so yeah. Is it? It's a sterling effort, a sterling effort indeed. Uh, but good evening to you all, thank you all for joining us. I can see some of you in the chat already. We've got Liam, Kelly, Leslie, David, uh, the architect. Thank you all very, very much for joining us. It is a pleasure to have you all with us. I'm looking forward to getting stuck into another episode of the preview. Of course, the same rules apply as we go through this evening's episode. Get your comments in the live chat and we'll pick some out to read and uh, and get on the stream. And uh, yeah, we hope you all enjoy. If you notice things look a little bit different, we are experimenting with a new platform. So things might not quite run as smoothly as you would expect from us for this evening's show. But we will... Uh, Get to grips with it as quickly as we can. You'll just have to uh, hold your breath and pray when Colin's hosting that he knows where all the buttons are. But you can uh, you can have fun with that one. But let's get stuck into our season so far, which is likely to be quite a short segment, I think, this time around. Yes, 
Yeah, a relatively short segment, I think. Obviously, both teams have only played two games into their competitive 2024-25 campaign. One league game, one Carabao Cup game, Bolton Wanderers and Wrexham registering a victory and three points in the season opener. Of course, Wanderers then went on to beat Mansfield in the opening game of the League Cup, whilst Wrexham fell to defeat against Sheffield United. And I think it would probably be fair to say it was unsurprising uh, I mean, Sheffield United look like a team that are, are ready to make the step up, uh, so I, I wouldn't want to to cast that as a, a criticism. But let's talk about that opening fixture. Wanderers were steadfast in their efforts, and despite, uh, I think it was a shaky end to the first half, Wanderers came out on top with a 2-1 win thanks to a Victor Adeboyejo winner at Leighton Orient. And Ben, I'm going to go to you first. There were plenty of positives to take from that game, but I think ever addressed the need for the squad to build relationships, gain momentum, you know, get some fluidity about their game. And we saw much of the same, albeit with a heavily rotated side against Mansfield. But what are your feelings heading into this Wrexham game with, with those two wins behind us? Yeah, it's positive, obviously. As you said, it was, uh, especially the Mansfield game, with it being rotated and loads of new players playing. There was a bit of, um, yeah, not, not exactly fluid football, but you could see uh, in spells there was lots of quality there. The squad's taking shape. It's going to take, you know, three or four weeks for everyone to get used to playing with each other, especially all the new signings. But yeah, obviously positive. Um, it's going to be, it's the first of loads of big games we've got now. It's going to be over 24,000 crowd, I think they said. Uh, and yeah. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tough one. Obviously, Parkinson coming back to his old club. Um, I would imagine he gets a good reception. Uh, James McLean might not not get the exact same. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, no, excited for it, uh, and I'm as I'm sure you are, Tim. Yeah, mate, I can't wait. I can't wait. I mean, there's, you know, I'm of a certain age where I can, I've been to a lot of grounds. I haven't been to. I, actually, I have been. I'm going to call it the Reebok, just because I am. Um, <laughs> I went there once because I used to be a I used to be a sports journalist, and I used to come like Watford and stuff. So I think Watford played Bolton at some point or other. Um, so I've definitely been there, but not in a sort of fan capacity. If you like, now such a long time ago that don't really have that much of a memory of it. So I'm just treating this as like a clean slate and a new ground. The same new ground since it's been there since what '97 or something like that. But um, <laughs> Yeah, excited for it because we, we, we've never played you in my lifetime. So I think it's since like 83 or something daft like that or whatever. Um, so yeah, would have been too young for that one. Um, but yeah, it's, gonna, it's just, it's just you know, it's a good to have a big occasion early, early doors in the season because you, know, you could have the greatest respect in the world. You could have Stevenage away, Exeter away. It's, still, it's just not, yeah. not quite the same, I guess, you know. Um, so to have one of the, the sort of the bigger guns, if you like, is a good test for for both sides, really. You know, sort of Bolton, sort of in amongst it last season didn't quite happen, uh, and and we've jumped you know, two divisions in the May seasons. It's just it's a bit wild. So I think we're gonna we're gonna get probably more of a true indicator of what to expect this season. You know, because we're not one of the bigger fishes in a in a smaller pond now we're just an, an average size fish in a much bigger pond so uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens on Sunday Absolutely I mean Wrexham's season opener was a, a five goal thriller against Wickham Wanderers and it was at, at home at the Stock K Rass and saw Fletcher with an 83rd minute winner which saw you talk, take all three points and then the away trip to, to the Blade saw you exit the cup but talk to us about your, your League One campaign so far then obviously it's been brief but how is uh, how how is life in League One treating you so far? Is it that that opening game was it as you expected? Um, you never you never really know because you know Wickham with the greatest respect in the world that you know if you probably go to some far from places probably people might not know they are they are but they've they've more than held their own in the championship in recent years gone by you know they had a cup final last year so they're no mugs and you know they've, they've got some money behind them as well I think so. And they've they got some good players as well. I and mean, when I saw like Sam Vokes and stuff was in, I was like, my God, how am I supposed to do a, a Welsh hero? You know, <laughs> so it was a weird, a weird situation. But all we wanted to take from it, like anybody at home on the opening day of the season, is to take three points. You know, that's, it doesn't matter by hook or by crook, we need to do that. And last year was such an eye opener in League Two. We just got hammered by MK Dons at home. But that was uh, partly to do with 
with the parameters of the of the US tour, just didn't have enough time getting back. They, they were still jet lagged. It, it wasn't very well planned out. Whereas this time, they were back a good twelve days before the season started. So there's no excuse really. There's no excuse at all. So I kind of was half anticipating um, a decent game. I didn't expect it to be a five goal thriller. I definitely didn't expect to see Jack Marriott score one of the goals of the season already. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's it's you know, Wrexham at home is 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 frightening. Like the 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 league record. I mean, I, I know we're we'll going to talk about Parky in a bit, but Phil Parkinson's record for Wrexham. I I know people say, oh yeah, but you know he should be winning games with the resources he's got. It's easy said than done. You've got to mold the winning team. You've got to get that that balance right in the dressing room and make sure you don't get a team of mercenaries. And um, his win record especially at home, is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it ha- I'm, not, I'm not joking. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but it has to be up there in world mm. football as a home record. It's just astonishing. It is astonishing. I think we've lost about seven or eight games, you know, in three and a bit seasons at, at home. They scored something like yeah. 350 goals <laughs> against 120. It's something mad like that. It's just, you know, I think, I think, you, you stick that those numbers in any other manager and people will be raving raving about them you know so yeah. he deserves all the plaudits that come his way I think we've had a comment from from Radix Lexine he says uh, where are you hoping to finish this season Tim oh, you know what if I had a quid for every time somebody said oh let's just consolidate <laughs> consolidate <laughs> so like <laughs> You know what? When you've been stuck in non-league for fifteen years and you suddenly have back-to-back promotions for the first time in your history, what? Why shouldn't you feel a little bit greedy and and, and yeah. naturally optimistic? But it's kind of like a free hit. I think if we finish anywhere above twelfth, it'll be considered a a stepping stone, really. But then, because of the squad that he's got and the squad he's assembled, you would like to think that a playoffs is achievable. I mean, it's, it's one of those, and we, we can all sit here and talk about how much Birmingham was spent, but it, it means nothing. Just ask Chelsea. Mm. You know, you've got you've got to be able to sort of utilise what you've got in a, in a very, very sort of, you know, positive manner. So we can all assume that Birmingham are going to walk it. I don't think it's going to be that straightforward. Um, like I said, that there's so many big teams in it. I, I would quite happily take playoffs on the final day of the season from an own goal of Sunday's arse. Honestly, I would. <laughs> Just because yeah. then you kind of get the sweet spot of, you know, people weren't expecting too much, but it wouldn't be a disappointing season either. I think if we finish 16th, 17th, people are like, oh, we really should be doing better than that. And I think we will do better than that. But I think top 10 would be, would be um, people wouldn't have any complaints about it, but I, I genuinely can't see any reason why if he makes, if he gets a striker in um, and we, we're lucky with injuries then I think playoffs is is achievable I think Yeah I think I think there's probably a clear top four I'm probably being biased saying that I think there's a top four in this division I think basically from fifth down to about 16th 17th it could be anyone's the playoffs like so why not why not dream of getting in the playoffs first time out because I mean obviously you've done it back to back Um which does not happen very often in in the history of football. So you've got obviously got something special going on. I think there's you and Stockport. You could finish anywhere, but anywhere between like fifth and thirteenth, and I don't think anyone would be really that surprised. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, you guys will know a bit better than me, but I, I look at that League One structure and who's in it this year, and for me, it's like it's a Championship two point zero. Yeah, I mean, it's such a competitive division, but an exciting division, and you know you mm-hmm. can see why. Why the sky cameras are there on on Sunday and not for the first or last time this season. So there's some big teams in there, some big teams, and it'd be very very interesting to see where where people end up. Like you think of like your Reddings of the world, Huddersfield, Wigan to a degree, Charlton, you guys, Birmingham. It's just like, and then you get you always get your dark horse, and you always get one. You always get one that comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Like everybody expects Crawley to go straight back down, but they've got a decent manager, so you just. You just never know. It's it's a it's a funny league. It's a funny league, but we'll see what happens. Absolutely. Uh, 
I'm going to have to move on to, to Parkinson because it's all the chat is, is talking about. Many of us are, are very familiar, obviously, with Ian Everett's style of playing. We'll have a good idea of what to expect when, when Wrexham turn up to the tough sheet on Sunday. But uh, we're also from, fairly familiar with a certain Phil Parkinson. We were familiar with his style of play, uh, or what we were used to. I think I think it's safe to say with a, a relatively handsome budget at his disposable. And obviously, you've got Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool. And I think Ken Anderson was probably more... A massive tool, to put it lightly. Um, see, I, I think his, his style of play has probably changed a little bit from, from when we had Mr Parkinson at the Reebok. Um, so tell us, what can we expect from, from his Wrexham side? Because I'm sure it's vastly different to what we remember from Phil Parkinson. You'll get a 5-3-2 all day, every day. Yeah. <laughs> wing backs, wing backs and wing Phil back. Parkinson is a sentence I did yeah. not think I would be hearing. Yeah. That said... He has he has hinted that he could he could change it up this year, uh, sort of plan B four or three three or something. But and he's got he's got the he's got the squad at his, at his disposal. There's a lot of versatility. There's a lot of players that can play in two or three positions. Um, what can we expect from from a Parky side? I mean, when we when we first had him as a manager, I was a little bit like really. It was like it felt a little bit like well, he didn't really do it at Sunderland, and everything he achieved at Bolton was like forever ago. Or at least it felt mm. like that. Um, it started slowly. It was, it was very war of attrition, defensive minded, squeaking the odd game by one goal, and then eventually, you know, you sort of, as you see in the documentary, I identify Oli Palmer as the main man that I needed for for Mullin as a strike partner, and. That, that sort of reaped massive, massive rewards. And yeah, I, I just, it's a weird thing because I know it's going to happen this year. That it'll be, there'll be a period this year where we don't win for eight matches. And the people that, that have come either back to watching Wrexham or are new to watching Wrexham and have only ever been used to seeing us win for the most part are going to get the shock of their lives. Mm. That's the beauty of football. You need that reality dose. You need that, that losing run or that barren run to sort of, Make you realise that this this is real life. This is what's going to happen. And, and I really hope nobody gets on his case. I uh, really hope nobody gets on his case because he, he's he's earned the right. Unless we lost twelve in a row, and obviously you're thinking, well, something's gone drastically wrong. He's earned the right for a, a full stab at this season. And there's a lot of love from him here now. He's got his own mural at the turf, and just just a nice guy, a humble guy. We we've interviewed him from the pod, and he he's never ever shirked an answer. He just gave honest answers very frank he's moved to the area he's really sort of in sort of you know immersed himself into what it's all about and he's just built a squad it was so tight knit like i don't know if if, if he had it when he was with you but there's a well documented sort of parkinson dickhead test if you fail that dickhead test you ain't getting a contract as simple as that that said holly palmer um survived the dickhead test and he's still with us so there we are as did James McLean, to <laughs> probably a lot of people's surprise. Not a dickhead, of... misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> That's certainly one way of putting it. Uh, Wanderers fans have got have got strong opinions on him, and I don't think he'll get the warmest reception at the tough sheet, but a lot of the comments in the chat are uh, are saying that, you know, what a great job that Parkinson did for us, and that they're hoping that he gets a, a warm reception. Liam has said, working under the pressure that he did for us, he deserves all the respect that he hopefully he'll get. Um... David has said Parky will get a good welcome because he deserves it. Uh, Radix has said hope Parky is welcome welcome back. I don't think there's there's many hard feelings. Obviously, the circumstances that or the, the the cards that he would dealt, I don't think there were were many managers that could do what he did um, for as long as he did at least. Uh, so Ben, what are you expecting from from Parkinson's return? Are you, I wouldn't say looking forward to it, but are you uh, happy to happy to have him back? Yeah, happy to have him back. I'm a bit um, nervous because it's it's the exact type of football that um, we've kind of struggled against recently. It like uh, we're gonna we're gonna probably try and press you high. And you're gonna have no uh, qualms popping up to Palmer, and he'll probably deal with our centre halves um, and be from set pieces as well. Uh, that's that's been a bit of our downfall the last couple of years. But yeah, it's it's gonna be a great game. It's going to be I can't imagine uh, Wrexham coming here and trying to come away with a nil-nil it's it, like many teams have tried to do in the past they're going to come and try and attack it feels like um, yeah as you say you've got nothing to lose it's if you come here and lose 3-0 to Bolton it's it's you know obviously it's not great but 
you walk away and think, well, they're probably going to be up there this season. It doesn't matter. So you, they're probably going to come at us. And yeah, it should be a really interesting game. You'll have to do, you'll have to do, you'll have to do a banner. The Bradford fans did a banner for Parky last year. It's yeah. tiny. Let's do a bigger banner for him. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if, uh, if anyone's got that. Um, what Another question we've had is from David, and he said, question, is Steve Parkin Parky's assistant still? He is. Yeah, he is. He is. He's great. He's great. What a yeah. character. I mean, if you've seen the documentary, they, they focused on him a bit more in a couple of episodes of season three. He's such a such a character it's weird though we spoke to parking uh and fans thing maybe the third season that they took over and like you just assume that when you've got a manager and assistant especially with them being together in so many places that they would be like so tightly knit but like away from away from the club they are they sort of speak or see each other it, it just works like a working relationship like you get them at the ground and they're, they're immersed in it but away from it they're just like yeah, we don't hang out. We don't enjoy it. <laughs> but uh, which I was kind of slightly taken aback by. But I think Steve yeah. Harkin's brilliant. He's brilliant. He's just just a straight talking. He's kind of like yin and yang. Him and Parky seem to be like chalk and cheese. Like Parky's kind of like the pragmatic, calm head when he needs to be. And Steve Harkin's the one who plays a rocket as and when they need one. So yeah, it just works really well. Absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll move on now to a segment that I think. We're... <laughs> All us Wanderers fans had hoped would be a little bit quieter this time round. Uh, but if the start of the season is anything to go by, we could well be in with the the same kind of look as as last season. And uh, that's our injury update. Tim, we'll hand over to you first. Uh, what are what are things looking like in the Wrexham camp? Obviously, we had a comment before from I think it was Mulberry Red, and he said, "Do you think we need another striker, or can we wait until Mullin is back?" So, so another question for uh, you there. But obviously, Mullin being the the main absentee. Mullin is back training. He is back training. Um, whether he'd be up to speed, I, I would I would not at all be surprised be surprised to see him on the bench on Sunday. Jenny would not at all be surprised. Um, and I say that because I went to Sheffield United on, on the Tuesday and Fletcher took a bit of a knock. He was hobbling at one point. And when you, you're his age and he's an impact sub, hmm. you have to kind of figure out, okay, well, when when do we need him? How can we use him? Uh, and you have to kind of, not molly coddle, we have to wrap him up in, in Cottonwall, you know, to a certain extent. So I think if he doesn't make it, I would not be surprised to see. He's not rushed back He's not rushed Mullin back, you know, they they made the precaution because it needed to be done, the little niggle that he's been carrying for a while. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he is on the bench, but do we need another striker? <sighs> I don't know, just just we just scored. You know, we scored five goals in two games. Um so I don't know, I'm not sure scoring's a problem. It's 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 mm. conceding set pieces, which seem to be the early early issue for us. Um so yeah, I'm not really I'm not too sure. I mean it's a weird thing, and we've got Sam Darby who gets a lot of heat. Uh, probably warranted, to be honest. He's, it's, it's just not happening for him at, at, at this level. We didn't do a great deal last year, and then we're a little bit thin. You know, we've got Marriott, we starting now. Palmer, we started with, and then, then we're a little bit thin. I mean, you know, we, we sort of chanced it with McLean, sort of mm. roaming up front on Tuesday. So I don't know. I, he is trying to get a striker, you know, I know that much. There are names being thrown about. I think the Kadamatri was thrown about from Sheffield Wednesday. Obviously lost out um, on a few of the players. So, yeah, I, I, I don't see it happening. I don't see Parker getting one in. But he's done that before. And then last week we went and broke our transfer record that nobody's ever heard of. You know, just out of the, out of the blue, Nolly Rathbone. So, you never know. But I, I think I think if we, if we don't get a striker, it's not going to be the end of the world because we're scoring goals, really. Yeah, I mean, for the Wanderers, the absentees list isn't too extensive, but I'm sure it's still frustrating. Obviously, the most recent one, Clyde Lolos faces an extended spell on the sideline after 
a pretty reckless challenge in that, that Orient game from, from Dan Happy. And obviously Will Forrester, I think who's had quite possibly the worst injury look of any, possibly even footballer I've yeah. ever known. I mean, the lad can't catch a break. He, he picked up Knox and then got into the team and impressed, and then he picked up Knox again and couldn't play, and then he picked up an injury and was set back even further. And then just as pre-season rolls around and we're hoping to see a little bit more of him, he, what does he do? He goes and falls down some stairs and he breaks a toe, dislocates another, and I think Everett's given him three months out. I'm not laughing. I, it just reminds me of a... <laughs> I love I love when you hear about rogue player injuries. You just never you yeah. probably won't find out about them these days unless you're a high profile player. But we had a player called Jake Spate years ago, and um, he ended up being unable to play for X amount of weeks because he put his he put his foot through his glass coffee table at home. I mean, <laughs> what can you do? I mean, how would you put your foot through a glass coffee table? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's like uh, I mean, David Wheater when he moved to Oldham, I think their owner. Tried to to play on the fact that he, he injured his back whilst picking up one of his dogs. It's just mind blowing stuff. Um, Time to retire, then, isn't it? Yeah, I think it might be. Uh, Kyle Dempsey could be back in contention though after missing some football due to a knee injury that he picked up, and a lot of the players that we saw injured in pre season are, you know, getting back. Obviously, Charles, the main one that we were a bit worried might miss the start of the season, but he seems to be backfiring. Obviously, the trio of Chris Freno, George Johnston and Randall Williams got some valuable minutes in the tank midweek against Manfield, and we could see all of those or some of those involved on Sunday. And I think that's all on the injury front, but in terms of a, a team selection point of view, Ben, obviously there's quite a few contenders. I think the biggest contention for me is is who's in that, that, that striker spot. Is it Adebayo? Is it Dion Charles? But from a personnel point of view, who are you expecting on Sunday? Yeah, to be honest, I'm I'm stuck. I mean, I think we know it's going to be Collins and I would imagine uh, McAtee. Um, just, you know, in them sort of inside tens behind. I would guess Dion Charles just because he started him last week. I didn't expect him to start late in Orange, to be honest, because he didn't have much of a pre-season and Adebayo had a great pre-season. Um, yeah, I thought it was going to be Vic last week, but it wasn't. And then Vic started midweek, so, and got, I think he got the full 90, didn't he? Yeah, I know Charles came on with 20 minutes to go. Um, I would imagine it's Charles up front, but it doesn't massive, massively matter, as we've seen over the last couple of years. He makes striker subs pretty early. So, uh, yeah. And obviously now it's not Jerome and Bogarsson coming on. It'll be Adobe Ajo and it would have been Lolos. But, uh, yeah, not this, uh, not for a few weeks now. But, um, yeah, I don't think it massively matters. If it's not working after 50, 55 minutes, he'll change it. Um, so, yeah, I'm confident whatever starts will be enough. Yeah. You'd, uh, you'd certainly hope so. We'll move away from the injury front and we'll get stuck into our newest segment of the preview, which is our pub watch. For all of you Wanderers fans, I think most of you know the drill by now with, with what pubs to go to, but we're excited to let you all know that we'll be in the fan zone ahead of Sunday's game from around 1.30pm as one of the official entertainment partners for the fan zone this season. So if you want to come and say hello, then you're more than welcome to. We're really looking forward to being there. We'll be in the mix with some of you fans. We're looking to do some fun like little mini quizzes and games. And without revealing too much, if you come and find us on Sunday... We're doing a Guess the Wanderers player game, which could see you £20 up, courtesy of, of Colin. So if you fancy that and you fancy making Colin out of pocket, then come and find us. Um, yeah, we can't say too much more, but come and find us uh, on Sunday and we'll, uh, we'll have a good laugh. But for all you travelling fans making the journey up to the Tough Sheet, where can you get your hands on some ale? The traditional pub for away fans is the Beehive, which is a 15-minute walk from the stadium. And some of the others, these are on the Wanderers website, I'm not entirely sure how up-to-date they are, but you've got the Bowling Green, the Blundell Arms and the Dragonfly, which I think is in Bolton Town Centre. Mm -hmm. I mean, providing you're not part of any firms, I think most places on Middlebrook are all right for away fans. I don't think you'll have too much bother. Um, but Tim, do you know any 
any of the local pubs in Bolton. I mean, I'm, so you were setting me up to you setting me up to say the Phoenix <laughs> Club then. Surely, <laughs> surely you're setting me up for that. It's been busting my best Brian Potter impression. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't drink, so it's not a massive issue for me. But um, I'll, I'll be honest, some of the the, the Chorley, Chorley FC boys have been in touch saying, "Come in, come in, and come in and enjoy our thing." It's fair play, I mean, it's a good way of monetizing stuff. I'm assuming they're away, so so they've got something going on there. They're encouraging people to go there, and with the amount of away fans that's coming, there's going to be plenty of plenty of Space for oh, everybody, yeah. you know. The, the pubs are going to be mad busy. Um, I'm, just, I mean, one of the buses I'm going, I'm just, just like them. They can, they can uh, take the weight wherever we're going. I'll get off and figure out from there. And I'll probably come to your fan zone and try and win twenty quid off whoever Colin is, and I'll just say John McGinley give the answer. <laughs> so that's about. I remember John McGinley being like an absolute stone cold ginger legend. It's like it's just <laughs> like a beast of a striker. That's like a long time ago. Yeah, oh, he was. Yeah. yeah, he certainly was. But enough of the chit chat. Let's get down to business with our hotting up segment. And I'm excited to see what people are saying for this one. But it is, of course, what's the score? As always, get your score predictions in the chat below and we will pick some of them out. But, Tim, we'll hand over to you. Guests first. What do you think the score is going to be? Um, as, as Ben said earlier, it's not likely to be a nil-nil. I know you've said that. It's going to be nil-nil, isn't it? Um, <laughs> you know what? You're right. We, I mean, part of you want to come there and, and sort of, you know, look at what I've look at what I've done at Wrexham. Mm. Um Blah blah blah. So, I think it'll be a good game. Uh, I just know uh, McAtee's going to score against us. Classic. Um, <laughs> I just know McLean's going to get a yellow card. Obviously, if he plays. Um, I think I think a draw for both teams at this stage of the season. Both fans will walk away quite happily with that. Now, I think personally, I don't think it's going to be, you know, a, a massive disgrace for anybody's come away for that with a point each. Cancel each other out. I think we two each. And uh, I'll be happy with that. I'll be happy with that. I think um, you know, win your home games and don't lose away, as they say. Ben, are you in a similar boat? Are you happy with the draw? Or are you uh, are you going for three points? Oh, I mean, our home record has been so good over the last three years. I, I feel like I'd always I always walk away unhappy with the draw. Even Portsmouth last season, one all, I was gutted at that because uh, I mean we should have won the game. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm always going to want to win. Um, I think, I think that I can see Wrexham scoring from a set piece, probably, because uh, that's our downfall and quite a big team. Um, you got you got big pitch. Your pitch looks huge. Yeah, it's quite wide. big. Yeah, it suits the way we play. With I mean, we push the wing backs wide and high and try and get a try and play a pressing game from the front. Um, I mean, I mean, for me, I mean, sorry to interrupt. For me, it's like. No. Well, you know, when, you, when you've been as low as Wrexham have been in recent years and you can think of, like, JJ Kochu and, you know, the only recent boat on link we've had was UC Yaskaline and when he came as a goalkeeping coach, I was like, UC Yaskaline, the guy's a legend, <laughs> legend for yeah. Bolton. You know, so you kind of look up to where teams have been and held their own and, like, you know, I think I think any self-respecting Wrexham fan will go, Bolton are a massive team, massive team steeped in history and, I think if we take anything from it, it'll feel a bit like Grey's Athletic or Wheelstone taking a point at Rex and that kind of, you know. Yeah. I think that there's a there has to be a large degree of respect there because of what of what the club have achieved in the past. Oh yeah, of course, and there's massive respect to the other way as well. Obviously, Parkinson with the history there, and there's not many clubs who will be able to do what you've done over the last few years. So, I mean, as I said, the, the sky is the limit for Rex and there's there's no pressure. It wouldn't surprise me if he came and shocked us, and we've we've been known to do that on big games over the last couple of years, especially with James McLean in the team. He uh, scored two in a four in one of the two four 0 wins that Wigan had over the last couple of years at our place. Um, but yeah, I am gonna go. I do think there'll be goals. I'm gonna go three two Bolton. A good one for the Sky cameras, won't it? 
Do you know what? It's funny you say that because in my prediction before, I, I must have sat and wrote this out and deleted it about five, six times. I first had it at 3 2, and I was like, no, I can't see us conceding two. And I'm not entirely sure how confident I am with us scoring three. So then I sat and I thought, and I said, maybe 1 1. I was like, no. And I eventually settled on 2 1 Bolton. Um, but I think what you said, Tim, I'd, I'd, I'd take a draw, I'd take a point. I mean, I'm going to stick with 2-1 though and and hope for the best and hope that we show up. But, I mean, you've said it now, Ben, and if James McLean rips us a new one and is sat there dancing about in front of us, I'm going to have to blame it on you and it'll be your fault because you, you've said it now. <laughs> do, you, do, you dislike I mean, him? do you dislike him because A, it's James McLean, B, it's the poppy thing, C, it's because he played for Wigan, or all three? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's the Wigan thing, I think, is the, it's is the main one. It's mostly the Wigan thing, isn't it? It's because they <laughs> come out, they, they could be bottom of the league with no wins in 20 games, and they turn up and beat us 4 0, no matter what happens. It's, yeah, it's. But to be honest, like, you know, football is, is, is restoring itself to, like, some sort of natural history, so Wigan will probably go down at some point. <laughs> Whatever. I went, I went, I went you to said it, You said it, not us. I went to Springfield Park many moons ago. Christ, life. <laughs> Definitely picked up some sort of disease. It was this grim old ground that horrible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think one of two things is going to happen is one of McAtee or McLean are going to score or get sent off. It feels like um, someone commented before. I don't know if you saw it. Just lastly, um, have you any idea how close Wrexham were to getting McAtee? Because it was reported for about a week beforehand that it was between us two, yeah, but I'm not sure how. It, you know. it's, from what? I can gather from what I've been told. Um, and I think I forget, I forget the was it Peter O'Rourke put a, a, yeah. a thing out saying that Wrexham lead the chase. It was agreed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, I think I think Wrexham's side in that were fuming because they thought that they, they were that the deal was pretty much there or thereabouts. So oh, I, wow. think, um, I think Mackesy's agent has kind of engineered that to then. Use Wrexham as, as leverage to get him a better wage and offer a, a bowl. So that's essentially, is my understanding, of what's happened. Um, so yeah, dark arts at work, but that's what agents do, isn't it? So mm. it happens. We've probably done it. Yeah. So. yeah. So uh, we've had quite a few score predictions from you watching along at home. David has gone for a tight game, but Bolton 2, Wrexham 1. Kelly's agreed and she's gone 2-1 Bolton. Liam, a little bit more brave. 3-1 to us, damage done in the first half. 2-0 at half time. I'll be happy with that. Uh, Radix has gone for 2-2. Two, two. David's gone for Bolton 3, McLean 0, red card. <laughs> We're not, that, that, that is partially could, could come true. <laughs> Part of that could come true. Yeah. We've had a 3 1 from Bolton, and I think in terms of score predictions, that's about all of them. And oh no, we've got one from Chris here 3 2 to Bolton, yes, which Chris. is a, it's a bold shout, but I like it. Goals galore. Um, that's all from us this evening. Uh, a very very big thank you to you all for joining us. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Preview, brought to you by us here at the Fan Zone Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, be sure to leave us a five-star review on Spotify and subscribe to us on YouTube. It is completely free. If you haven't seen, we are doing a giveaway of some Wanderers shirts. All you have to do is head over to the Just Giving page, which is on our socials somewhere, and you can either make a donation to Sans, the charity for stillborns, and baby, sort of people who lose their babies quite early on. Uh, really, really ch great charity doing some good work. So if you want to go and find out about them, head over to the Just Giving page. You can enter for free as well. But of course, we encourage you to make a donation if you can. Until next time, though, you've been tuned into the Fan Zone podcast. Take care. I'll see you later. Come on, you guys.